So I've got a little piece of clay and I'm going to throw a ring and make handles for this little pot that I just squared and put a squared foot rim on it. So I've got this little piece of clay and I'm gonna open it to the bottom and push the clay out just a little bit. And I'm just gonna make a nice little wall. I want it to be the right width for the handle on this pot. And I need to remember that it's wet, so it needs to be a little bigger than I think. Now I've got a nice little circle there. I'm gonna slow down and put a throwing ring in it, but I'm gonna use this little chopstick because it's such a small piece of clay. And put a throwing ring in there. That'll give some nice interesting texture to the top of the handle. And now I'm just going to torch it a little bit. Just enough to set it up just a tweak. And then I'm going to cut it loose and cut it in half. And I've got two little handles that I can put onto my pot. See them? And see the texture? It's nice. So, I'm going to clean this up. And set my pot on here and I want to get it somewhere close to the center boy that was pretty good because I'm gonna put a teeny little line around so that I'm sure to put the handle at the same point of reference and I'm gonna make my squares face these angles so it's lined up like this and like that it makes it real easy for me to use these points in this square bat system to know where to apply my handle. So right here is one. And I'm going to score just below the little line that I gave myself as a cue. And right here is one. And I'm going to score just below the line there. And now, with a little moisture, I'm ready to attach my handles. So here's one, and I'm just going to kind of shimmy it into the pot a little bit and bend this around just a touch, and I've got this top ridge that I can just smooth into the pot, and then I'm going to turn this part under. It's a little tricky to do away from yourself, but I'm doing it. And once I've got it attached on like that, I can see that this nice lines up here are mirroring the lines down there. And I'm just gonna take a minute and push this clay downward into the pot like that. And like that. And all of a sudden, it becomes one with the piece. And you wanna take a little minute and clean it up. I love these sponges right here. <coughs> you get them at the grocery store. They're real flat and they just don't hold a lot of water and you can use them for cleaning up. So you can see I've got that cleaned up. Now I'm going to take my fingers and really draw attention to that attachment. pretty good. So now I need to do the other one. And I'm going to do the same thing where I shimmy the clay onto the pot, give it a little reinforcement, bend it under. Can you see that? Bend it under and now my fingers are just massaging that clay downward until it looks like it just flows right into the body of the pot. And then I'm going to take my fingers and clean up those edges and come in here and really define it. It's really nice. Yeah, and you can see on the top, you can see on the top that it still has those nice little throwing rings in the handle that I just created on the wheel. And over here as well. So now I just want to make sure that they're attached on well, 
And usually what I do is come around and just give them a little reinforcement into the pot. I'll take the lid off and I'll come in here and compress just a little into the body of the pot because I want to make sure that this handle is one with the vessel. Well, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to do it on this side. Make sure the handle is one with the vessel. And there it is. Put my lid back on. And I have a vessel that was thrown with three pounds of clay. I've thrown, shaved it with a Sureform tool, threw the foot and squared it and attached it on, threw the handles, put throwing rings in it, attached it on, and used the pot as a chuck to make the lid and throw the knob. 